Ladies and gentlemen, the short game to the comp video. We're going to be discussing DirectX 12, Xbox One memory bandwidth, draw calls, and a bunch of other stuff, according to the Stardock CEO, Brad Wardell. He's actually been quite vocal on the whole DirectX 12 mantle and next generation APIs as a whole, which is quite unusual. A lot of developers have been rather. Well, they've just maintained radio silence, to be totally blunt. Um, this is also an article, if you so desire to check it out, where I've linked some sources and gone into a bit more detail regarding some specific points, um, and also, of course, linked various bits and bobs, for example, the Xbox One's SDK analysis, if you need to have a refresher and obviously go through a few other bits and bobs. But for now, let's jump right into things. So... Brad has taken to Twitter, his blog, and um, we can kind of correlate that with some other bits that other developers have said, and it's giving us an indication of what the future may hold. Um, I'm sure many of you are aware of what a draw call is, but I want to go into that first just to give you an idea before we get into the rest of the video, just so that you're all kind of aptly prepared. So a draw call effectively is almost like a command from the CPU to tell the GPU what to do. In other words, uh, if the GPU is going to draw a chair or a table or you know a light source or whatever, the CPU has to tell it to do so. And think about it, every single frame of animation, let's just assume that you're shooting for 30 FPS, if the player has moved to the right slightly, the angle of the table, the angle of the chair, the angle of the light source, or what have you, is going to change, and therefore the scene needs to be redrawn. So effectively, for the most part, when we're talking about uh, draw calls or what have you, we're talking about how many you can actually throw out in a frame of animation. Great. Now we're all on the same page. According to Wardell, DirectX 9 manages to hit about 15,000 draw calls with currently available PC hardware. DirectX 12, meanwhile, manages to hit a little bit higher. It manages a rather staggering 75,000. So if we're throwing the consoles into the mix, the Xbox 360, just so you're aware, DirectX 9 was what the Xbox 360 was using. A slightly changed version of DX9, to say the least, but effectively, you could say that they're sisters, DirectX 9 and the Xbox 360. It managed to hit between 5,000 to 7,000 draw calls, assuming it was utilizing Epic's Unreal Engine, which of course is pretty damn popular for games. In fact, Unreal Engine was even used for, say, Gears of War, to give you an idea of the diversity of the games it uh, were uh, using Unreal Engine. The Xbox One, meanwhile, managed to pump things up, well, dozens of notches. It manages to hit about 50,000 batches right now. This is with kind of the unfinished version of DirectX 12. Just remember that. DirectX 12 isn't finished, developers aren't used to it yet, and still, 50,000 batches. That's very impressive. And the console's 8 CPU cores are technically able to pump out these amount of instructions, and the GPU, uh, according to Wardell, may be able to handle the load, but there is a bit of a problem. Brad Wardell does call the Xbox memory bandwidth, the DDR3 memory bandwidth, and these are his words, not mine, crummy. Um, and he's not 100% certain if the ES RAM is capable of making up for the bandwidth deficit. He is doing some testing on that, as well as other developers. Now, if you remember, the Xbox One CPU is running eight cores, true, but two of those are reserved for OS functionality, although technically one of those two can actually be tapped into developers giving a portion of that seventh core to running game engine which is quite nice and the Xbox One's GPU has a peak performance of about 1.3 teraflops. Memory bandwidth for the DDR3 is 68 gigabytes per second but according to Microsoft's SDK uh, articles and you can check out more information on that where I've done a full technical breakdown of all of the performance of the Xbox One uh, so far. I still need to cover the audio portions of the Xbox One, the Xbox Live Compute, and also the uh, Move engines. But the rest of it I have covered, so I've linked those in the article if you need more information for references. But according to Microsoft, in the real world, achievable numbers are considerably less than the 68 gigabytes per second, and you're really most likely going to be hitting about 80% efficiency. You might scrape a bit more, but it 
depends really what's going on and what operations are going on in the system and so on and so forth. But for all intents and purposes, you're looking at, you know, the high 50s in reality, which isn't terrible, um, but Brad is concerned. So, moving on, think about this. According to Wardell, from his own testing from a lower to mid-range uh, GPU, which is the HD Radeon 7790, the 9 hits 4,000 batch count. The X11 hits 11,000, which isn't bad. It's almost three times the number. But either DirectX 12 or Mantle hits a fairly staggering to be honest, it's almost five times, it's hitting 50,000, and this is a pretty low-end GPU, to be honest with you. If you were to go out and buy, like, the 290, uh, that would be the AMD Radeon, uh, yes, the Radeon R9 290, it has a massive amount of GPU computing power consider compared to the 7790, but I'm just using an example. And those figures, however, do assume that you are only targeting 720p and a frame rate of only 30fps. So, naturally, these things will alter and differ depending on what you're rendering it. In other words, what your target resolution is, what your target frame rate is, and so on. I'm going to finish this off with one other piece of exciting bit of information. Do you remember the Battle of Naboo scene from Star Wars Episode 1? That would be the Phantom Menace. Probably the most frustrating part of that whole movie, to be honest, and I think you can guess, would be Jar Jar, but aesthetically speaking, particularly when the movie was released, um, it looked very impressive, the Battle of Naboo. Wardell does believe that if you can hit around 75,000, um, then you're going to be able to hit that level of realism. Um, obviously, this does assume everything else is being equal. In other words, you're not sporting a crappy low-level GPU, you've got a good CPU, and you're not running out of memory bandwidth, and so on and so forth. And of course, that you've got the, you know, the artists and the expertise to actually render the scene. But assuming all things are equal, it's possible that you may actually be able to do that in the future. And while the average game now has a very small number of light sources, apparently it's about four, which is kind of ludicrous when you think about it. Sometimes it goes up slightly higher, but most games now are hitting about four. In reality, think of how many thousands of light sources there are, and even if one was to imagine, say, the scene of Star Wars, just think, just for a moment, of how many lightsabers there were, how many lasers were being shot, how many, oh, I don't know, missiles and explosions there were, and how many lights there were from even the robots or from the sun or from reflections from something else. Just think of all of that and think of how many light sources there are, and then you can imagine just how kind of far we are away from that now. But of course, that's now and in the future. Oh, the future is going to be very different. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.